Hey babes, it is Sharonda Isadora and welcome to Brazen Babe Reviews. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing already. <clears throat> I have to eat some breakfast here because I'm tired. But I wanted to get this video out today. Not today, you know, today, tomorrow, I don't know. But I'm tired. Me and my cousin, we went to go see um, D.L. Ugly last night. He is still fucking funny. I love me some D.L. Ugly, but he um, he did a comedy show at Caroline's uh, Comedy Club over in the city. Uh, he's I guess he's on tour, comedy show tour, whatever, but he was over at Caroline's last night, and he was freaking hysterical. Um, me and my cousin, we got there a little late, so we missed the first dude that performed he had like three other people before him so we missed the first dude that performed but the two dudes after him were kind of funny especially like i can't remember his name the other guy but they were all pretty much funny and dl still has it i gotta say because you know you have to wonder when you go see these comedians you know and they haven't like done stand up in a long time you know when they used to do it like back in you know do the stand up back in the day you know DL still has it. He was funny as fuck. I, I must admit, he was funny as fuck. So, a little bit of political, a little bit of family, you know, a little bit of other stuff. It it was really, really good. So, shout out to you, DL. You the man. So, this video today, we're going to talk about sympathy and retweets. And yes, we are talking about the whole Sarah Desden bullshit that went down on the Twitters this past week so let's get to this thing shall we all right so if you are on the twitters then you know the shit that went down over this past week with uh this particular author that i just mentioned and i'm naming this video sympathy and retweets because that seems to be the thing now you know we get in our feelings we retweet some shit that somebody said terrible horrible mildly stinging or bad about us and we have to tweet it especially if we're big name people you know all these people out here with the blue checks with millions of followers you know now we got to get our fans fans and you know whoever else all upset you know and we have all of this going on so this is what happened with uh the whole sarah Destin shit <laughs> So, on Tuesday, I'm not, I think it was Tuesday, anyway, on November 12th, Sarah Desden decided to tweet out a cropped picture of an article from a university, and above that cropped picture, she quotes, authors are real people. We put our heart and soul into the stories we write, often because it is literally, literally, literally <laughs> how we survive in this world. I'm having a really hard time right now, and this and and this is just mean and cruel. I hope it made you feel good. So, after Miss Sa I was gonna say Miss Ann, I gotta stop doing that because I said that in one of my tweets, but I don't feel bad about saying that shit because that's what she was acting like—a fucking Miss Ann. And um, you know, after Miss Desden tweeted that out you know, everybody start running to her defense. Oh, Sarah, we're so sorry. You have to go through this, you know, and all this other stuff. Now, again, this lady tweeted out a cropped picture of an article from a college uh, newspaper. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think it's Northern State University. This was, this was an article from 2017 I don't know if the article was from 2017 but the person that was quoted in this article was quoted from the year 2017 the young woman her name is Brooke Nelson <coughs> excuse me her name is Brooke Nelson because again after Miss Desden tweeted this and it got, it started gaining traction, <clears throat> excuse me, 
on the Twitters. <clears throat> Sarah Desmond has over 250,000 followers. So, because she was having a bad day and she saw something that offended her, her sensibilities, she tweeted that out to a crop picture, not the full article, not a link to the article and nothing. <clears throat> She cropped what she manufactured that fucking tweet, and I don't care what y'all say. She manufactured that tweet, okay, to what she wanted it to say. And the young woman was quoted in the article basically saying how she, back in 2016, when she was a junior, she, came, she became a part of this committee because. I guess Sarah Desden, one of Sarah Desden's books was going to be chosen as a common read. A common read on the college on the college level are books that are chosen for incoming college freshmen by fact, you know, by this committee of faculty, staff, um, you know, higher, I guess higher level <clears throat> college students like juniors and seniors and stuff like that. So this, she became a part of this community to, to say that, you know, she didn't want Sarah Desden's book chosen. She wanted more in-depth, you know, more, she wanted more, she wanted, fuck it, she wanted better, she wanted better, a better book chosen for that year, for the, you know, for the common read. So, like I said, again, Sarah Desen decides to <clears throat> crop the part of the article where the girl said what she said, the young woman, because now she's a grad student. I don't know if she's a grad student at the same college, but she's a grad student now. But when she was quoted in this article, and I'm going to give her a name because I dislike like the fact that people was just piling up on this woman didn't know her name, didn't know the full reason behind the, the you know, behind the article or anything, just blew my fucking mind. So once Sarah Desden um, tweeted this out to over, you know, to her Twitter, Twitter followers, and then you had all these famous young adult, some not young adult authors come running to her defense, you know, and then they have millions of people following them as well so now this shit done gained traction you know and <clears throat> and now this girl has this this because you know once shit goes viral and it gains traction now we gotta sign now we gotta find a person that has offended the famous person the more powerful person so now people go out and they find this young woman who is now, again, a graduate student. Her name is Brooke Nelson. And she starts to get vitriol thrown at her from all sides because of this cropped, again, cropped picture that Miss Desden decided to tweet out. Now, when I first saw everybody replying to Sarah Desden's tweet, I just sat back because I tend to do that now. I'm such an old person now. <laughs> I don't like to do shit. But, you know, I, I sat back <clears throat> and I said, you know what? sit back and see how this shit plays out because most of the time that's generally what you have to do you know sometimes you just have to sit back and watch and see how things play out because see how the outcome is going to be you know what i mean because with twitter with the you know with social media you never know what the outcome is going to be you know and the more you know this happened on again november 12th so it boggled my mind, like the pallet that this young woman received from people. People were just, you know, tweeting at her, 
um, you know, because again, they had done found her. There was a person on Twitter that managed to, um, her, tw her Twitter name is Tinks. And her at, I'll, I'll link, uh, her, um, I'll, I'll link her, um, her Twitter, uh, uh, her at in the uh, description box. But she put out a tweet and she says, white fem feminist YA Arthur throws a giant tantrum and all her y YA Arthur friends attack a college student and calls up their university and complains because her book got passed over for a black authors in favor of a more mature curriculum. What she was able to do is able go back to go back and up under that original tweet that Sarah Desden put out, which is now deleted. But bitch, what what do we always say now? Screenshots are forever. She was able to go back and get a majority of the people that responded up under that tweet. And child, when I tell y'all all these famous ass blue check authors. Responded up under her. We have Meg McCaffrey. Uh, some of these people I don't know. Jennifer Weiner. She <laughs> she was a, she was a real trip. Um, Angie Thomas, um, Tiffany D. Jackson, um, Sandra Mitchell, Alyssa Day, um, Essie Smith, Meg Cabot, K. A. Tucker. I mean, we had all these people come up under her jennifer weiner up under her even short articles about tiny universities can re reinforce systemic discrimination and double standards in which women's stories and voices are discounted i have zero regrets about using my platform to call it out because before anybody even had the goddamn common sense to even like go look at the article that this woman had done tweeted out to see the context behind it i watch this cropped picture that sarah desden put out morph into something different because then we started talking about young teen young teen girls and what they're not allowed to read and they shouldn't be allowed which is jennifer weiner's whole which was jennifer weiner's whole goddamn thing she just took she just took the conversation to a whole nother level and yes those are conversations to have but that was not this conversation because nobody knew the goddamn context behind the damn article and bitch you talking about discrimination when the book that was chosen over Miss Desens talks about that. Discrimination towards black men, black and brown people in the judicial system. And bitch, you're talking about discrimination. Are you kidding me? Right? So Jennifer, she didn't even apologize. She she just white woman away through the whole goddamn thing, you know what I'm saying? And again, yes, these are conversations to have about misogyny, you know, towards teen girls, towards women, you know, and and all of that. But this was not the conversation. This was not, this was not it, people. That, this, that, it wasn't it. So for me, it was just like, you know, I sat back and I watched, I'm watching all this shit go down and nobody to me, what pissed me off about it is that nobody had, out of all these famous blue check people, that when you sit down, when they sit down and do these interviews and how they say they do their research and how they're always so careful not to, you know, to uh, offend or, you know, do, you know, shit like that. Out of all these blue check people, nobody had the fucking common sense to say, okay, all right, you know, yes, sir. And I'm not saying that you cannot defend your friends. 
when your friend is feeling a certain way about a certain thing. I'm not saying you can't defend your friend or send your friend, you know, uh, I'm sorry, you know, I hope you feel better, you know, some shit like that. But the way these people were going at this unknown person over a crop picture was fucking astounding. And to me, nobody sat back and said, you know, oh, you know, let's, you know, wait a minute, you know, like none of you people thought about actually going to look up the article <laughs> that your friend cropped and tweeted out it out of there. Nobody. <sighs> Fucking amazing, yo. I, I just was amazed <clears throat> at the vitriol this young woman started to receive. There was one author under the tweet, because I bookmarked a lot of shit, <laughs> that said, I was just like, wow. And I quote, after t uh, Sarah did that, Sabahan, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know her name. I think they said her name is, her first name is Vivian. Yes, Vivian, whatever the fuck her last name is, because she tweets up under Sarah Desden, fuck that fucking bitch. Oh yeah. Tiffany D. Dax, D. Jackson comes up under her and says, word, ditto. Oh yeah. Okay. Danielle Clayton comes up under Tiffany D. Jackson and says, can I add a few choice words to Sabayan's brilliance? Fuck that raggedy ass fucking bitch. Oh the fuck yeah. That's what we're doing, ladies. That's what we're doing. We're out here calling college students we're out here calling other women bitches after one of y'all friends just sat up here talking about some discrimination against women and all this other shit. That's what the fuck we doing? Because your friend had her little fucking feelings hurt by some fucking words? Are y'all fucking kidding me? Bitch, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Wow. It was fucking crazy. All the big name people I saw that tweet in defense of Sarah Desden and her poor little fucking feelings, her poor little fee-fees. This was about feelings and ego. This had nothing to do with what teen, what teenage, teenage girl aren't allowed to read. This had nothing to do with misogyny. This had nothing to do with none of that shit. That fucking tweet, that original tweet that Sarah Desden fucking tweeted out on November 12th was about fucking feelings and ego because she was feeling some type of way because her book was not chosen for a fucking college for college fucking level calm down Sharon this Sunday it's calm oh bitch come back in come back in Whew. are we serious Y'all, y'all, sympathy and retweets, people. People, people do this all the time, especially on book Twitter. Some author gets in their feelings about something somebody said about their book, and now a tweet goes out. And I am getting, I am tired of seeing that. Everybody isn't going to like your stuff. Everybody isn't going to enjoy your work. And yes, people can be assholes. And yes, you are allowed to have feelings about people not liking your book. But keep that shit off the timeline, people. Y'all have group. Everybody has a group text. Everybody has a group chat. Bitch, you had... How many... 
Sarah Denzel, how many fucking people could you have called and talked to before you tweeted that out? How many? You. A fucking famous author. Bitch, you sitting good, eating good. Because your books are very popular, okay? What, what are we doing here? Like, once I started going down a rabbit hole and looking at her books, you had been on fucking morning talk shows and all this other stuff. So, obviously, you have a whole lot of people out there that are loving your stuff, too. So, what the fuck are we doing out here, people? What are we doing? I cannot believe it. I was just like, wow. <laughs> it was it, it was absolutely mind-boggling crazy. And then, you know, after everybody started, you know, saying like, you know, oh, okay, let's look a little bit further than this. Let's go, because you can Google the art article. Once you go look, and you and you look at the full goddamn article and you see what was you know what the article was about and what the young woman actually said now it's like now i didn't i didn't like or retweet anything that none of these crazy ass people were saying because i was like you know just sit back and see where this is gonna lead because deep in my soul <laughs> deep in my soul i knew i was like this is not going to end good especially once the tweet started going and getting viral and it was y'all it was every goddamn where because now people because this is a famous author and you have other famous authors coming is coming out in support of her now publications are starting to pick it up right so do you know even before that people actually started searching for the actual article and y'all <laughs> it was just crazy that shit was beyond crazy so after all the shit happened people started to reach out uh i think there was an article in the Washington Post. I'll link the articles in the description box as well. There was an article in the Washington Post, The Guardian, and The Vulture. People actually started to reach out to Miss Nelson to finally, like, you know, find out was, you know, how she felt. You know, how how did she feel? Because can you imagine just going through your everyday, regular, degular, schmegular ass fucking life and you start getting fucking notifications? from social media you know you ain't do shit but now and it's not good notifications people are calling you raggedy bitches tell saying fuck you you fucking bitch you know people are doing that stuff people are, are getting at you spewing all types of hatred and fucking vitriol at you and you don't even know what the fuck you did you this woman had to shut down her social media and she didn't even know the fuck was can you imagine that shit just going through your regular ass every goddamn day. And then one day out of nowhere, your social media blows up. People are fucking DMing you, calling you bitches. And you call, probably call it, girl, probably calling the girl stupid. And, you know, if, you know, you're a woman, how do you treat another woman like this? <laughs> but y'all out here calling this woman a bitch. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, someone finally had the common decency to reach out to Miss, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to Miss Nelson. And she goes, she wrote in an email noting, this is from Vulture.com. I won't read the whole, her whole quote. Like again, I'll, I'll 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 link it. But she says she wrote in an email noting that the original Aberdeen news article had left out her reasoning for why she advocated for other books. 
Those other books that were going up against Sarah Destin's were Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, Breath, Eyes, Memory by Edwidge uh, Dunticat, I think that's how you pronounce it, and When Breath Becomes Ear by Paul Kalafi. Those were the three books. They ended up choosing Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, which, by the way, is about to be uh, a major uh, a, a movie playing uh, Michael B. Jordan. I'm going to go see that. I know I'm going to know I'm gonna be upset and crying, but I really want to go see that. Um, But she says, she continues, these three books are beautifully written and push readers to stand against racial inequality that the judicial system perpetuates. To consider the, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's why she didn't want Sarah Desden's book chosen that year. Again, y'all, she did this in 2017. For the 2000, I guess for the incoming 2017, uh, you know, freshman class. <clears throat> in that original article, she said something in the, in two, she said something to the fact of, you know, Sarah Desden's books are fine for teen girls, but she wanted some, she wanted something more in depth. I'm sorry, something better for college level students. That's what this girl wanted at this that's what this woman wanted at that time. So, y'all can get up up here and say what <clears throat> just like you're entitled to your opinion. That girl was entitled to her opinion at that time. And if she didn't want a particular if she didn't want young adult romance because I believe this is what Sarah Desden writes. If she didn't want young adult romance coming in when she was there, then she had every right to feel that way. Isn't that what we do when we send our kids to school? We want them, we tell them to get their opinions out there. Because at that time, this, this, even now, this young woman, she is still getting her footing in the world. She's going to make some mistakes along the way. But isn't that what we encourage our kids to do when they're in high school, college? It's, you know, even in like elementary school, we we encourage them to get their opinions out there. You know, if you feel if you if you feel strongly about something, say it, speak up. Isn't that what we do? And then we turn around and try to take these kids voices because some grown ass fucking adult feelings got hurt. Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing? It was an absolute shit show on Twitter from the 12th the th <laughs> up until fucking Friday when finally Sarah Desden decided to fucking delete the tweet, the original tweet, and pull out, put out a bullshit ass apology. This heifer goes, two days ago, I chose to post a screenshot of a quote from a news, newspaper article that was critical of my books. Bitch, everybody ain't gonna like your stuff. I want to apologize to the person who, who was quoted. I'm sorry. And then your raggedy ass don't even have enough common decency to apologize to this young woman by name. After you allowed for four fucking days of her to be attacked, Sarah Desden, you sat in your you sat in your motherfucking house, Sarah Desden, and allowed for this woman to be attacked for four fucking days. And that's the apology you put out. You can't even name the girl by name. You raggedy, ma'am. You raggedy. Like many, like most authors, I hear all the time from people who don't like my work. Bitch, you're a big name author. You probably have more love than hate. <laughs> Ooh, bitch. It's part of the job. 
Yes, Miss Sarah, it is. You're going <clears throat> with a platform and, and a following. I have a responsibility to be aware of what I put out there. You think? I know this apology doesn't change what happened. No, bitch, it doesn't. And I'm truly sorry. Fuck your apology. Moving forward, I'll do. I'll do better. No, Sarah Desden, you should have done better. If you were, everybody is entitled to bad days. Everybody is entitled to to have a bad day and feel some type of way. And when you having a bad day, you you come across some shit that makes you feel a way. Everybody is entitled to those feelings. You are entitled to that. But you took it. Did you took a hop? Leap, skip, and a fucking moon jump. And did the most craziest shit I've ever seen. And I need to do that. I'll do better. No, you should have done better. The people that responded up under you, to you, should have done better. Because up, up under some of them fucking tweets, especially that fucking lady that called that girl a fucking bitch you you said i love you huh you grown ass fucking women are out here get on fucking twitter every day talking about discrimination and women and fem feminism and all this other stuff but you fucking say i love you to someone that calls another woman a fucking bitch What are we doing? And I am so, like, I am so disappointed in some of the authors, like, Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, like, you know, like, all these black, all these fucking black authors that fucking put on their capes and went to bat for Sarah Desden, I'm just like, what are y'all the fuck doing? Y'all get on here and get attacked just for just for saying that let allow black women to speak. And this is what y'all do. This is what you do, Danielle Clayton. You call somebody a raggedy fucking bitch and then try to fucking backpedal and pussy pop and put it put it on black women and say, oh, you know, that's just how black women talk. You know, we we have a different way of calling bi women bitches. You write about that, Miss Clayton. We do. But you did that shit in an offensive way. You most certainly did. Don't put that on black women. Don't don't do that. Don't don't fucking insult. Don't sit in our face and fucking insult our intelligence by saying some bullshit like that. What the, what are you doing, ma'am? Like the majority of authors, like authors, like you know these. I expect that shit from white women. I really, really do because that's just. I'm sorry. That's what some the shit they do sometimes, you know. But I am so fucking. Whew, Jesus, be offense. Angie Thomas added the school. Northern State University. This is appalling. Remember the book you chose in 2018, The Hate You Give? It was written for teen girls. Teen girls is in all caps. Don't make any any of my books your common read since my demographic is beneath you at Northern State. So, Sarah, I love you in your stories. It's their loss. Angel Thomas, what's your books about? Yeah, we you got a little YA romance going on in your books, but what are your books built around, ma'am? Social is fucking justice, police brutality, the fucking killing of unarmed young black men and black men. That is what your books, ma'am, are built around. Am I am I correct? I didn't read The Hate You Give. I didn't read Thug. I didn't read those books. But aren't those what your books are built around, ma'am? Aren't they? The social commentary, the discrimination that young black and brown people face. 
especially dealing with the police? Huh? And you do this shit right here? Angie Thomas, weren't you just on fucking Twitter not too long ago? Giving a rally cry because nice white ladies were coming at you about your book? And you add a university and tell a university not to pick your book? When you be on Twitter talking about somehow your books are how your books are banned in certain schools and in cities and states and stuff like that, and that's what you do? Okay. <laughs> Man, listen. <laughs> Even my fab N.K. Jemison had had to throw her shit in a foray. Roxanne Gay did it too. I'm not even surprised. She called this woman Sarah Desden's nemesis. Her nemesis? Her nemesis? <laughs> Yo, y'all gonna stop playing. Y'all gonna stop playing out here on these Twitter streets. Her nemesis? And then once all this shit blows over, you know, now, like I said, everybody's backpedaling and pussy popping. Everybody's putting out an apology, deleting tweets and shit. But again, I'll leave a link to the tweet where the one Twitter person was able to get a screenshot to all these famous ass people that were, uh, you know, that weren't su supporting their friend with her hurt feelings. <laughs> So Roxanne Gay comes out and apologizes. You know, she gives her little apology. And, um, you know, she, and pretty much says, you know, she thought the girl was a nominist. What, what does that have to do with anything? Honestly, really, what? Even a nominist person is a person. That's somebody with real fucking feelings. N.K. Jemison, if a student is harassed, that should definitely be condemned. But being a student does not exempt the person from basic politeness expectations or from critique if their publicly stated reasons for excluding an author's work are problematic. Welcome to adulthood. But, but it wasn't problematic. Everybody went off a fucking cropped picture. Nobody at that point even... This even decided to fucking Google the article. You had this girl's school fucking apologize to Sarah Desden. How fucking fucked up crazy is that when your own school can't even support you? The woman that wrote the damn article that quoted this woman, this young woman now, even issued an apology to Sarah Desden. I mean, you wrote the article. <laughs> it's your article. But I guess the pile up in the vitriol was so bad that, you know, I guess they felt they had to. I wouldn't have. Because fuck your little fragile ass feelings, lady. Fuck them. I'm not doing it. Because if you're a journalist and you already put it out there, stand by what the fuck you did. And stand by the people you quoted. And by her school and this lady that wrote the original article issuing apologies on this young woman's behalf, y'all opened the floodgates more for this woman to face the fuck shit that she faced. But her words weren't problematic. Those were her words. And if it, and, 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 and even if they were problematic. All you grown as adult people, nobody sat back and said, you know what, maybe we should, you know, because again, the young woman's name was already out there. The school was already out there. Nobody thought to say, you know, let's, let's reach out to the school in a respectful, quiet way, not fucking yelling at the school in tweets. <laughs> nobody thought to say, you know, let's reach out to this young woman and have a conversation. Here's the thing. What if this wasn't a college student, right? Because we're talking about young girls and now we're talking about young girls and teenagers and, you know, all this other stuff. What if this was a, because 
y'all do know that high school students take college level classes, right? Y'all do know that in some high schools that some of these kids are allowed to read college level books, right? Y'all know that, right? So what if this was a teenage girl? What if this was a senior in high school? What if this was a junior in high school? And y'all all done piled up. Not that it made it any, any, you know, I'm not excusing what happened. You know, I'm not discounting Miss Nelson's feeling. But, yeah. What if that was a high school student? And y'all went by that crop picture. Miss Vivian, you call it a high school student. A high school student, a fucking bitch. Danielle Clayton, you calling a high school high school student a raggedy fucking bitch. What if it was that? And I hate to bring race into it. I really, really do. But we have to talk about the, <laughs> the black women and the women of color that put on their fucking capes to run to Sarah Destin's defense. I have to wonder if any of y'all would have did that. How many of these authors would have ran to y'all defense? Especially once the fucking smoke clear and we and we found out the whole goddamn context of the article you know what would have happened because Sarah Desmond isn't really facing any type of ba backlash for what the fuck she did but you know what would have happened to y'all black ladies women of color if y'all did some shit like that y'all would have got attacked all over again people would have been calling y'all all types of names saying all sorts of shit at you DMing you some bullshit. It fucking blew my mind. How y'all rushed. How y'all put on your motherfucking capes. Y'all super super girl, super woman capes to go to go defend Sarah Destin. And I have to wonder if she would have done the same thing for you. I have to wonder. I do. I, I really have to wonder. I have to think about that. <clears throat> we have to stop this. We have to stop this, especially if you call yourself writing for a certain demographic. Because here's the thing, people. All fucking young girls ain't gonna like your books, Sarah Destin. All young people aren't going to like your books. They are not. And I'm not talking about their parents emailing you or saying some old out the way shit. I'm talking about a student. I'm talking about a young girl who you claim to write for. What if she would have did that to you, ma'am? What if? And because you were feeling some type of way, you decided to crop that young girl's words and tweet it out. Hmm. <sighs> I really hope this outcome of what went down with Miss Nelson and the people that, especially <laughs> you ones that had all these, you know, big ass words and tweeting people's like, tweet, tweeting fucking means like, you know, you know, hold my bag. Where she at? I just want to talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I Like, y'all just going to go on with y'all raggedy ass fucking lives after y'all done tore somebody down. Y'all just gonna, you know, 
put out some half-ass fucking apologies and go on back to your real day after you did what you claim this student did to you? I'm telling y'all, I'm so fucking sick of book Twitter. I, I just, it, it, it amazes me the shit that comes out of, out of book Twitter sometimes. It fucking amazes me. The fucking steaming hot pile of bullshit that comes out of book Twitter sometimes. It's, it, it's fucking amazing. And the grown as adults that perpetuate the same shit they get on Twitter and talk against that shit don't be lost on me at all i just be like bitch you was just on here a couple of days ago getting cussed out and now you're gonna turn around and cuss somebody out <laughs> Ooh, sweet baby jesus i don't even know i'll link the articles I'll, I'll link the Twitter link, uh, you know, if, you, you know, where you can go and see all the shit that happened. Um, I don't even know. It, it was just a crazy ass fucking thing. At the end of the day, people, think before you put shit out. Think before you put shit out. And nobody, again, nobody's saying that you are not allowed to have your feelings. But think about that shit before you fucking tweet it out there. Especially if you have a huge ass following like these, some of these authors have. It's, I. Do you know what this woman is um, in school? Studying now, her graduate, online harassment. That's what she's studying in her, <laughs> while she's in graduate school. Specifically, online harassment. The irony has not invaded me, she wrote. She is currently in the midst of fall semester finals and declined to talk about how it felt to live inside the center of a raging Twitter storm, which is exactly what the fuck that shit was. I can summarize my experience as the following, she wrote. Since I actually have a scholarly interest in online aggression, it's been a really interesting experience to observe how people use language to frame the issue and to express their perspectives in so many different ways ways i hope she's get. i hope she gets a fucking 200 plus on her shit going forward because can you imagine i can't even and then to be where she's at now studying to to be looking into it from a scholar scholarly perspective into online aggression Ooh, that fire that paper gonna be fire girl yes miss nelson i hope your teacher gives you a 200 plus young young lady i hope your teacher does because you deserve it girl you, you live through it people think about what you do before you do it i am so tired of getting on book twitter and seeing sympathy and retweets i really really am i am tired of it. i'm tired of seeing it from authors i'm tired of seeing it from bloggers i'm tired of seeing it from regular daily ass fucking people i'm tired god damn keep your trauma and your feelings and your emotions off the goddamn time line and we can avoid this shit going into a new decade can we do it Until the next one, guys. Later days. Bye. <laughs> so, hey, listen. I'm not doing screenshots. That's why I'll leave the links for some, like I said, the three articles. 
the Twitter, uh, the Twitter link for the person that got majority of the screenshot for all these from all these big name authors responding up under. Um, Sarah Desden, um, and also a couple other people that I've seen so far that have talked about this on BookTube is Laura, Laura, Lauren, sorry, Lauren over at the Novel Lush and Mina over at Mina Reads. I'll link their videos below as well. So you can, they have screenshots, you know, they have some screenshots of all the stuff that went down as well. Not all the stuff, but you know, some of the things that went, went down. But if you want screen, if you want a video where there are screenshots in it, then definitely check those girls um, videos out. And again, I'll leave the links. Cause what we always say, do your Googles, honey. Do your Googles. Bye.